since it's uh, officially your first time uh, over here uh, with an e YouTube interview, I want to uh, take the opportunity to get uh, a little bit of the history of Miami, uh, how Iraq Mill started the choir, got things going, and how things have developed till today. How many albums are we at, first of all? Well, that's a good question. I don't know the exact number. It's in the area of 25, okay. I think, because the Miami is, is 35 years. This is Miami's 35th year. Okay. We started in 1977. First album was called Victory and Tebby. And um, we put an album. Wouldn't, wouldn't have any idea why. <laughs> uh, 1977. Victory and Tebby, right. You're a youngster, so yeah. you're right. Uh, the Victory and Tebby was dedicated to the Tebby. Tebby story. You, you, know, but you, remember, you, you know about the story, but. I'm very familiar with the story. Right. So um, anyway, went through all the different years. I, I think we put out an album about every year and a half. So if you, that's around, I think around 25 albums in, in, in 35 years. And and this any is, idea on, on number of songs? Well, I composed on these albums all the songs, uh, except for I think about two out two. Um, but it, we're talking about uh, the 25 albums, and uh, you know it's got to be in the area of uh, 300. Uh, I don't know, 300 songs on albums, something like that. Something because uh, 25 times 10 plus some other side albums, so it's probably like in the area of 300 songs on albums. Which of course, as you, you have, as you probably you know, live uh, albums and things like right, that. as you probably know, every for every song that gets on an album, there's another 10 songs yeah. that, that are not. Yeah. So you know, you do the math, and you know, there's thousands yeah. of songs composed. But for the album itself, and, and we're right now in your studio. Right, right. This, this right. is where a lot of the magic happens. A lot of the magic happens over here. We got uh, we got the keyboard. We got wireless microphone system over there. I don't know whether the camera's going to catch it or not. We have a Pro Tools system, we have the computers, we got the Macintosh uh, thing. So we can also do video editing as well over here. Oh. Video as, what are you editing all, all your stuff, for your, your, your shows and everything that need to be edited, all done over here. Right, ever since 2004 when the computers were able to do it, you know, so we've been able to bring everything down so here. So you, you do that yourself, the edit, on the videos? I do a lot of it myself on the video editing because when it comes down to the cameras, and it's like, it's almost like a composing thing, like you know the music. And uh, so a lot of the, uh, the fancy stuff, the openings and all so that stuff. So like you're not just uh, uh, head of a choir over here and running, you're also right. a video editor. Well, for my own stuff, I don't do it, you know, I'm, oh. I don't do it for outside <laughs> things. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't advise right. that. But. Same thing for recording. I mean, the kids come here, all the solos is done here for all the albums since 2004. Uh, Revach album, Yavar album, Mashiach album, Yilash Shem, the solos, adult choir. Everything's My like own that. voice, everything does here, except for... Uh, and also some, some instruments, except for we need a big room for a big choir, then we'll go to, to a, a bigger studio. studio but 80% yeah. of the recording is done here uh, space, uh, right? uh, over here because, you know, that type of thing. So. so how did Miami get going? Well, Miami got going in 1977. The, the story is that in, um, uh, in not, before 1977, I was in Toronto, Yeshiva in Toronto, and there was... I, 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 Started a choir there with somebody over there called the Toronto Preche Choir with songs like Yamar Bayaim Hahu. These are these are these are old Altus classics. Al Tiraki Ashe, you know these songs. Hi Rainy Hashem and all these songs. And I did a choir in Toronto. I was in Yeshiva then. We did two albums at Toronto Preche. And what happened was um, I did another album. Called Kosalanika Three, which is Sulim Beves Hashem. So on. Anyway, make a long story short, I got stuck in the rain somewhere and I got pneumonia. My doctor said that I should go down to Florida, so I was down in Florida to my relatives. And the doctor felt that you know the heat is very good for pneumonia. And um, when I was down there, you're still a bacher then, or uh, I was still a bacher. Still, I got married later. So, you know, uh, so um, uh, he says. So just um, go, just go, go to uh, bacher. Being told by his doctor, go take uh, some time in Miami. <laughs> right, because the doctor felt that it was not, I was not going to get better. Were you learning in the yeshiva over there? Or? I was in Israel in Toronto, ah. right. I would I'm, go saying, I'm uh, saying in the, in the yeshiva in Miami then. Or? No, I was in Israel in Toronto. Uh -huh. And I was there and I, and I did this album and then I got this pneumonia being stuck in the rain. And then um, he said, listen, you're not going to get better unless you're going to go to a hot weather. So he, he said I had to go to a week or 10 days to fly. So yeah. I went to my relatives. There were some relatives we had in Florida. Oh, so you spent a few days over there? Yeah, 10 days. When I'm there, I go to a local shul. Uh -huh. And people said, "Oh, you Rachmiel, be gonna do you made Alma Toronto? Why are you not making a choir for us here in Florida?" I said, "I'm here, uh, uh, you know, for ten days. No, we have very good voices down here in Miami. You should come to, you know." So some parent said to me, "I don't know who it was. I remember it's so long. 
I'll get together a bunch of kids. Can you come and listen to our kids? So I said, okay, you know, I'll come listen to your kids. So I came. What do you come to listen to that, yeah? Well, I came down, and he brings in like 20, 15, 20 kids from a yeshiva. You're like, oh my God, what did I just get myself into? And um, I said, listen, you know, and uh, it, they were pretty good. There were some nice voices. So I said, you know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll do something with it. So I start to practice a little with the kids for 15 to half an hour. I said, you know, maybe I'll do. I don't. You were there for only seven days. Yeah, but I did it for an hour with them or something, and then I went home. Uh-huh. I don't know. A couple of months later, I got called from the Chabad of Florida, and they were doing a concert down there. Now the year of this is like 1976, 75, 76, yeah. and they were, they needed they were doing a show there. This is a course for. Uh, it's something like, yeah, I don't remember, yeah, the, I don't remember the name, right? And he's doing a concert over there. And um, he says, he heard that I have, that I did something with the choir with, yeah. with the Chabad. Would I come down and do a couple of songs on this concert? As a side act or something. I don't know what the story was. I don't remember. So I said, okay, you know, it was, it was Ben Azmanim, it was a Hanukkah. I don't remember exactly what the story was. So I came down on a weekend, and I practiced with them a couple of songs on a Friday but the shops, I don't remember exactly what it was. And on Sunday, I went up and did a couple of songs. And it sounded okay. You know, it wasn't anything special. And that's why I started to think, you know, one second. You know, a lot of people come down to Florida. And um, maybe I should make a choir in, in Florida and go down. I didn't think of making a choir in New York at the time. It didn't even cross my mind whatsoever. I was in, you know, I was in, I was in Toronto. I was being as minor. I went over there. I said, you know, people go down a lot to Florida. I'll have a choir in Florida. And if I need to make a qu- concert here, I'll bring them up over here. In those days, flights from Florida to New York were very cheap. There was an airline called People's Express. You wouldn't even know about it. It was $50 to fly around the whole United States. They actually States. have now today. Spirit has like these $9 very, a pair. Right, right, right. So it was very, so very... It was cheaper. <laughs> it gets cheaper. But if you get the deal, right? Yeah. And... Um, so, so I decided, you know what, I'll make a choir from there. And that's how I started eventually to make a choir. Um, that's how it started. And then eventually made, a, made the first album, Victory and Tebby, with kids from Florida. And the second album was also from Florida. The third album was also from Florida until 1980. And then I said, I, I can't keep schlepping down to Florida. What, what am, what am back I doing? And forth, back and forth. And I decided, you know what, I'll start a choir here in New York. And, and, you, and keep the same name. If I'm going to change the name, you know, uh, it's Miami Boys Choir. And that's how it started in 1977. So, what do the people in Miami say when you came to New York and started using their name? Well, <laughs> I, I don't remember. It must, have, it, must have, it must have been a little I bit think, odd for them. Like maybe they, I don't know. They, they were. I think they were proud of the fact that, that you know Miami was still on the map. Miami that is started it off and all that. You know, and I didn't want to change. I was going to change it to uh, the Brooklyn Boys Choir. Or something. Yeah. What was I going to change it to? So I just didn't. It just didn't. It just crossed, crossed my mind. Miami was a nice name. I decided to keep it. You know, until today, I still meet people who say. Do you live here? You live here? Like I still get that to this day, despite the fact that I've told people millions of times, and the kids, the kids are from New York, New Jersey, but people still like think they, they don't hop. That right? It's, that it's My practices are in Brooklyn. I live in Flatbush, but never. <laughs> you still have that thing, but because it's you know Miami boys. School. It was the name that everyone knew, and you stuck with it. When you, yeah. when you have a name, you have like you know. That was the general idea. Yeah. So and then from New York, how did things develop from there? Once well, getting it together in New York that took me. I don't remember exactly how I did it. I kids from a couple of schools in 1981, 1982, got together a choir. And New York was different. It, Florida, when I went to Miami, it was very simple. There was a yeah. couple, two schools. Kids would come. And it was just very simple. And New York, was a, like everything else, is just a little bit more complicated. I remember I started with one school, a second school. And eventually it was a word of mouth thing. And I got together a choir. I don't remember exactly how I got the kids together. But I wound up some kids from New Jersey and from here and there. And I started working on the Bissiata de Shmai album, which, right. was, uh, ni- which came out in 1984. So I started working on it in 1982. Which, anyway, Bissiata de Shmai was a new thing, new style. It was a little bit more of a yeshivish style. And, uh, the style. and um, Bissiata de Shmai came out, and then the rest is history because uh, it took off real fantastic. And then I just stayed with the New York, you know, working in New York, New Jersey. That was all tapes then, going tapes then, to CDs. Cassettes, then. cassettes, cassettes. Yeah. I, I reme- people, people that I don't even know, some people don't even know what cassettes are anymore. Right. I remember when they, we had cassettes, which came out. Your, first was we, your, your original al- albums were the records? First we had records. Uh-huh. Well, the first albums were records. I had Toronto Pecha was at records. <clears throat> Victory and Tebby came out. And it was records, and something new came out called a cassette. 
It was brand new. Cassette. And I yeah. said to the, 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 my distributor at that time, it was called Minora Distributor. I said, well, cassettes with these cassettes. Is it's a okay. Some people are buying it, some people a little bit, you know? Yeah. So we had the cassettes, because that eventually, when it got to the Bissiat in 1984, the records were selling Fine. very little, and everybody was buying cassettes. Hey. And the whole big record, with all the information in the back, people used to sit and look at it. Those are the days when people used to sit and listen to music. Ah. And there was a big, big album. And in and, and the back of the album, you saw the pictures, you saw the information, and it was a family... It was a family event. It was a family event. It was a family event to listen to music. And these songs went and in, seeped into the consciousness of people, and it was a whole different story. And it wasn't until many years later when something called the CD was introduced into the business, but that was much, much later. But it was cassettes for many, many years. And from 1980s, how many kids have you had in and out of the choir? Well, from the 1980s in the New York, New Jersey area, you got to figure 25 to 30 boys per, uh, you know, a couple of years. So from 19, and we're in 2012, that's um, 32 years in the New York, New Jersey area. So if you figure every three years is a turnover of 25, 30 boys, so that's got to be about 300 boys, something like that. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but it's something, it's something like there's overlap, you know. So that's then more or less the history of Miami? That's pretty much the history of Miami. I mean, with, you know, musical changes over the years and styles. But I think the core of Miami throughout the years has been the idea of a certain type of a, of a sound, a certain type of a yeshiva style based on my upbringing. I'm a Miri yeshiva guy, you know. And, I mean, and that's been my upbringing and my family. And putting that sound into it, which is a yeshivish contemporary sound, and that's, even though it's changed over the years, different styles and different beats, but that's been pretty much it. So throughout the years, we had Ashkafas, Misata Shmaya, Klai Yisrael Together, Shabbos Yishalayim, all the different Ashkafa type of concepts, some themed albums. And that went all well, the way... Most recent, Mi Shami Lai. Right, up to Mi Shami Lai 2012. Usually that's what, you know, we had a couple of albums in between that weren't really a theme, like, you know, Revach and Yovo, it's more, more like a little different. But I think throughout the years, it was basically themed albums with uh, Shkafa ideas and, you know, trying to make a little difference in the music and try to keep it in a proper way. So and I think... What, what are the plans for Miami in the future? Well, you know, there are plans specific plans, Baruch Hashem, there's always plans. When a person doesn't have plans, then you know it's time to hang it up, yeah. you know. But there's some really, um, really good things coming up. I mean, this is a big, big event right now. It's an upcoming concert. And, you know, we're coming up right now, as we've discussed in regard to the beaming around the world and this Miami free show. This is the 35th year of Miami. Next year will be Tzvei Malchai, twice Chai, Miami 36. And that's going to be a Kanaina are a big, big event, and not only for New York, but for other cities and such like that. So, you know, that story is... You don't want to reveal too much right now. Well, I thought that's sort of like, like Hakdama. That's like an introduction to what's going to be coming on. I mean, uh, there's a lot of, you know, musically, Baruch Hashem, there's a lot of songs been composed already, and there's a lot of things. I have to see how that's going to fit in with that 36th anniversary for afterwards. Um, originally, I was thinking of making... Miami 35, the big anniversary, and I said, listen, from a Jewish perspective, 36, 36, 36. I think, is the proper thing. And then I had this, this, you know, concept for Miami 35, so that, I think that's on the horizon. And we also have a choir in Eretz Yisrael now, you yeah, know. That, that's an album. On the Mila Shem Eli, they sang it in Ivrit. So that's now, enough. Now you can put on shows in Eretz Yisrael. And you're, you're running that, you're going back and forth. Well, I have somebody, Menachem Klein, in Eretz Yisrael, who's my musical director. They are former Miami member and the choir there and, and on the horizon there are, are going to be opportunities to both choirs come together in concerts there's going to be a lot of interesting things you did some stuff over the summer at different locations i think right we did a, we did a whole bunch of things we were in south america and we did all over and um actually we're working on some recording now to eventually put out something f f with the uh, earth Israel choir to put out a recording and with their them. Their own individual. Right. I don't know how many songs it's going to be. We're working yeah. on that right now. We've already recorded a few songs. They sound unbelievable. And uh, we don't want to rush that. We don't want to figure out how to put that in. And my, actually, my, 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 my family, my sons are very talented. Uh, I have my, my sons are, you know, boys are in yeshiva, but they're composers. Were they part of the choir? Or? They're part, they were never part of the choir when they were younger. That's, they were never part of the choir. But um, not because they weren't talented. I don't know. They just didn't, uh, didn't yeah, want to didn't didn't do it. And... Um, so they are now 
you know, when one of my sons sings, and then another other one composes and arranges, so I think they're going to be involved a little bit in the Eretz Yisrael thing, and we'll see how, if we're starting to put together some of the things so that move the next generation forward, in, in you know, in a proper way. And uh, that's exciting, too, because you have to be, you know, moving forward, and um, at the same time, remaining true to the ideals that you believe in. Well, a good work, and uh, you should only have a tzacha, and good all your endeavors, this whole mode, and uh, everything that Miami is doing in the future. A tzacha, Rabbi, to you as well. Okay. Good work.